I got all this gyan from him, by the way, last time when he gave this talk. That was in April. And I am teaching this course this year. So I tried to incorporate some of those things. I did not use turtle uh, except for initial labs where people really had fun drawing turtles, but that was lab assignments. Uh, explaining some <coughs> made same problems. One of the problems where I had asked them to uh, calculate histogram for an image. So I sort of told them what images are and what histogram is. And the notion of histogram equalization with some demonstration of images. And I was told by many students, just like you got the feedback on graphics, mm -hmm. that they understood histogram computation better with those image examples. So basically, the, the actual problem was given an array of digital image to calculate the histogram. So I showed them that the histogram is in the range of 0 to 255, for example. And for black and white image, you will have various values. So I gave them an example of an 8 pixel by 8 pixel image. Incidentally, all the images are from Wikipedia. I do not know how many of you have tried to search on programming concepts on Wikipedia. So the best explained programming concepts are to be found on Wikipedia, and that is complete open source knowledge. So at the beginning of this slide, you will find, just like many of my previous lectures, they say, several slides courtesy Professor Ranade, or several slides courtesy Professor Sony, or several slides courtesy Wikipedia. So this is an image. Each large square actually is a pixel here. And then I said, the, these are the pixel values, or the eight by eight things. Then I explained, what would be the histogram when you calculate that? I explained that this histogram has the smallest value at 52 and the largest value at some 126, uh, no, sorry, uh, 154. Now, if I, if I were to stretch this histogram, take it to zero and take it to 255, perhaps the contrast will improve. Then I explained that if I once calculate this histogram, I can calculate the cumulative distribution function, and then there are some histogram equalization mechanisms. So these formulations are taken verbatim from Wiki, because I did not have time to learn how to type these things in this slide. I simply copied the image and put it, which is perfectly legal. Then I said after histogram equalization, I explained to them that, look, what was 52 becomes 0, and what was some large value becomes now 255, and effectively the whole image is stretched. But the most important impact was when I showed them that this is how it will look like. And as a contrast, I redrew the previous image and kept showing them by going up and down. So you can see very clearly the contrast improvement. Just for a good measure, I took another image, a grayscale picture, which is actually a scene. I showed them the histogram and CDF how it is restricted in a small range. Then when I equalize the histogram, how does the histogram and cumulative uh, function looks? And then how the actual image looks. Hmm. And again, if you see this image, which is the original, and this image, people actually clapped. In fact, I have found that in 837 students, unlike Professor Arnade, who actually delivered the lectures twice to two smaller batches, uh, I am I'm giving lectures in convocation halls. All 833 students sit at one time. And there is no way for either the teacher or the students to indicate unhappiness or, uh, or happiness. So what I have found out is that when students do not like one particular announcement, they will just say, oh, and there will be a uniform sound all across. And when they like something, they simply clap. So there is a huge clapping here. And then I explained that to do this, uh, all that you need to do oops, sorry. is, this is how you'll calculate histogram, this is how you'll read the file, and basically the histogram computation is just this crucial thing. So the notion of associative array, where you take the pixel value, treat that as an index. The original problem which I had given, I had given a restricted image which did not have pixels below some 24 and above something. So some people had actually wrongly defined an array to be of only that size. And they were doing a variety of computations. Now, 
these are actually simple concepts. The idea to use these kind of graphics I got from Professor Ranade's uh, lecture. So thank you, Professor Ranade. <laughs> well, I think this is a great example. Uh, if we use algorithms before explaining or write a program for the particular problem, will it be okay for that? If we explain through algorithms kind of steps. Uh, can you give me an example? Like suppose uh, for the uh, Fibonacci series or uh, for any sorting methods, yeah. if we go uh, from the scratch of algorithm huh. and then uh, we try to tell the students to write a program in a syntax of like C language or C++ language. Will it be good for that or uh, not to develop the programming skill in students? Okay. So there are, there are several answers to your question. Okay. So, <laughs> so say for example, uh, so it depends, firstly depends on what course you are teaching. Okay. Uh, I recently encountered a course in uh, Mumbai University Mathematics uh, BSc part 1 or something like that, where, which was a course in algorithms, but they would not write even one program. Okay. So, uh, if they can do a whole course without writing one program, certainly in theory it is possible to explain an algorithm first, definitely. Okay. So, no harm at all. At this level, however, I suspect that uh, you should get to programming with some regular frequency. Okay. I mean, I, I find that just understanding all the programming constructs itself takes a long time. And therefore, if you sort of spend a long time on describing algorithms in an abstract language, I would rather say try to write it, try to make your program so simple that it looks like an algorithm itself. Okay. In an algorithms course, people use say English like pseudocode. Okay. Now that pseudocode requires some level of maturity to understand. Okay. That is precisely the maturity which is lacking over here. Okay. I would also say that rather than talk about sorting, which is interesting, I would probably say talk about histograms. Because look, there has, there has to be a payoff for anything that you do. Okay. So after you do the histogram, you have to apply it to a real picture and see that the contrast actually improves. Okay. That's really important. Okay. That's really important for the students. Otherwise, it, it remains an abstract exercise. The fact that it is related to something is very important. So, to do that, you have to understand the algorithm, you have to write the program and you have to execute it. All the three steps are important. And in each step, something exciting has to happen. Just like, I mean, if you want that clap, you have to do that. Okay. No, but, but I mean, the students clapped for a really good reason. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, it is not I, that… Uh, actually, I will tell you what. I will further modify his answer. Suppose we decide to try it this way. You are trying to explain an algorithm and then followed by program. Do it, but keep a constant vigil on the faces of the students. If your algorithm does not excite them and you can feel it, please cut it short. Because although the algorithm will be very nice, will be very important, but if they are not paying attention to it, only you are enjoying the algorithm. Our, our job is to make students enjoy the algorithm. So that is why there is no unique way of teaching programming. We used to have a saying when we were very young teachers, I am talking about 1971-72, that uh, uh, if there are M teachers teaching programming, then they would like to teach in N different ways. And N is often greater than M because the same teacher has different views on teaching program. And the rule number two was simpler. Irrespective of how a teacher teaches programming, a student learns programming on one's own. <laughs> I did not like the second rule though. <laughs> but now if you combine the fact, I think the teacher's job, of course, is to train the student in uh, programming skills and give enough uh, information skill knowledge, syntax and so on. But I think the primary job is to motivate the student in believing that programming is important, useful and interesting. And it is towards that belief that we are trying to give different examples, different segments and whatever. So uh, the generalized answer is yes, if you feel that you can describe an algorithm followed by this, 
But I like Professor Ranade's observation that do not expand so much time in algorithm that very little time is spent in either constructing the program or enjoying the results of the programs, particularly the program relates to some real life situation. Correct. And, and in an introductory course, it is really important to make it relate to real life examples. These days, I think displaying images and uh, producing sound is so easy. Actually. Is so easy. So we have to use that. Incidentally, he mentioned sorting. So this week's lab assignment in my course, mid-semester exams have been graded. So mid-semester marks are there. I had used the string class so far while dealing with string and completely avoided either the pointer or the care array concept for storing strings. Because null terminated string is a very artificial concept. If you want to look at string as a data type, you can't do that. You can't concatenate string. You can't do anything that string class permits. However, you have to introduce these notions. So I have given them a text file, explained that how your marks are entered by TAs in spreadsheets. So we have a serial number, roll number, name, batch number, and marks. And then all of these are merged. Then I said I've exported this file into a CSV explaining comma separated values. And then I said this is your input. Now you read the input in string arrays. However, you have to delimit, you have to find out those delimiters, commas and things like that. For which I have said you will use character array. So take each line into a character array, find out delimiters. Interesting problems like somebody's batch is missing, somebody's name is missing, some, somebody's marks is missing, etc., etc. And then finally they have to sort these in descending order of marks and print the top 10 performers. Okay. Then they have to find the average marks per batch. I have 40 batches, lab batches. And the course project is going to be done, one lab batch, one project. 20 to 25 students will do one project. So there is going to be a competition. Now when they find lab batch averages, they will suddenly realize my job is, lab is better than others or my lab is worse. And accordingly, you know, they will decide their strategy on doing projects. So this way, if you can, whatever little way, this is just one way, whatever little way you can keep their involvement in the progress of the course, I think that is the gist of what Professor Arnade is saying. That ensure that they remain involved in whatever you do. Am I, am I right? Absolutely. You have put it <laughs> better than I have <laughs> said. Yeah. I'm Sangeeta, Professor of Computer Science Department, uh, Amrita School of Engineering, Bangalore. Actually, I have a background in maths. That's why I find that when you say that you start teaching with triangles or circles, students identify because there is a well-defined logic there. So what we do is we decouple the logical thinking from the syntax for some time. So they feel that their thinking logically is more important in programming than worrying about the syntax. When you are telling don't tell about int or don't tell about repeat, all that. So we are making the syntax simpler. So in, in that it looks that if uh, good teachers bring out a set of well-defined problems as you're telling focus through a problem towards a programming construct. So if at the end of this workshop we can come out with say 25 set of well-defined problems which cover all the programming constructs and each of these problems can be decomposed into well-defined tasks with a well-defined logic, then I think most of the teachers in local colleges all may not have so much of creative thinking then we can make their task easier, like if we can bring out such type of problems, because expecting that all the teachers would get this type of creative thinking is too much to ask for. Uh, I'm sure all teachers will be capable of doing it given enough time, but I, I understand the spirit with which you are asking this question. Uh, Professor Fatak pointed out uh, the home page of our courses. So last several years of courses have been archived. You will find material for every lecture. And to the extent I have been successful in <laughs> putting into action whatever I was preaching, I think you will find my material there and you are certainly welcome to use it. But yeah, but I, I think the, the suggestion implicit is absolutely right. I think if we can find if we can find good real life examples with which to begin every lecture, it will be very nice. Yeah. And it does require a fair amount have, of thinking. We have standardized it to some extent. Like, yeah, of course, there should be flexibility, but 
if we would have standardized this to some extent, then probably we would reach out to, as it's a very fundamental course, yeah. most of the students find it yeah. difficult. So, so there is good. also the additional issue there that some students may not be too well versed in math. So, we might need a different set of examples for a different set of students. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, all that really needs to be thought about. Uh, but as you said, most of the things would come from the 12th standard level, like histogram and things. Most of the things generally come from there. So yeah, but they don't necessarily they learn don't the 12th standard level too well. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Sangeeta will be surprised how varied the background of students could be. In my course, apart from all first year BTECs for whom the course is compulsory, there are MSc students who also take this course. MSc Maths is okay. MSc Geology, they have not done this Maths. 30 years ago, 25 years ago, when I used to teach this course, I was quite surprised to see an answer book, which actually it had asked for multiplication of two matrices. The answer written was, who is a matrix? Please ask questions which we can understand. That was my first realization that there are people who may never have dealt with matrices. I'll tell you another problem that I face here, I am sure most of you would be facing in your colleges, because the problem is more acute, if any. When you have 800 students, typically 10% students would have done actual programming in C, C++, Java in their 11, 12 standard. There would be 10% students who would have never seen a computer. So the diversity in a programming course is much more than the diversity in physics, chemistry, maths course that you will endorse. There is an additional problem. There are several students who cannot understand clearly lectures given in English. I have seen in my Bharat Yatra when I had gone, the conversation between the teachers and students outside the lecturing, the question answers often happen in native language. In Maharashtra, students ask questions in Marathi. In Tamil Nadu, they will ask in Tamil. In Orissa, they will ask in Oriya. And the teachers also answer because that is how they understand. The students are smart. In about three to four weeks time, they pick up to understand English, but they are still not capable of asking questions. Now, when they don't ask questions, actually we are denying them learning. Because half the learning is because the questions are asked. Because you are asking questions not to the teacher, really, you are asking that to yourself. How do you encourage that? So, one of the, if you have read my theme paper, which I had circulated to all the participants, the action point in this collaborative activity, when we realize the national mission, is that all participating teachers who will get all the lectures of the final workshop, they, they, all of that is going to be released in open source anyway. They are supposed to sit at their own place, sit with a webcam, a student, one or two students, will give them the tools. And what they are supposed to do is, for every lecture which has been prepared, the students will ask some questions in the native language of that place. And teacher will respond in native language of that place. And the teacher will prepare an English transcript of the conversation. This entire video clip, along with the English transcript, will be added to that lecture as a part of the open source material. I personally believe that many students will benefit from that. Similarly, a small backgrounder in fundamental mathematical notions as a revision is, is really likely to be useful as a supplement to this course, where people who do not have these simple concepts sometimes, or they have forgotten, okay, they, they could visualize. No, even if we repeat that concept, I feel it helps because strengthening, strengthening their basic maths is as well important. The, so it gets the, a the dual The problem process, Sunita, is time. This subject is one subject yeah. out of the six subjects that students have to do. And uh, another problem which our colleges face, which we don't face here, is the non-availability of competent teaching assistants. Yeah, we don't have. You see, when I teach a 800 student course, I would have died if I was teaching it anywhere else. I have a battery of 72 teaching assistants, 60 first year MTech students and 12 second year MTech students. And you can realize the MTech students are probably gate toppers from wherever they are. They are as good as teachers. And we have of course to organize them. So that work is a huge work. But once you do that work, the amount of uh, work that they are able to do, handling labs, doing the entire evaluation, all grading, now that's a great advantage. We don't have that advantage in other colleges. So we have to think of not only these uh, sets, as you mentioned, these 20 or 30 uh, large problems which cover everything, but I would go to the extent of saying that 
elaborately designed question banks with questions and answers readily available should be accessible to students and teachers where teachers can choose randomly that is also part of the uh, part of the theme i am prafulla i am working in kg so my college in vidya vihar sir i am feeling a dif uh, getting a difficulty in uh, conveying to the students like as you said it is a diversified class in the knowledge level and many of them are having uh, that occasional courses taken in 11th and 12th and many are not taking that yes. that is one problem and the other problem is like uh, the whenever i am explaining the concepts half of the class will be knowing that and they want like it's already known what next and half of the class is unable to follow what i am teaching at that time yes so i had the same problem the way i have solved it is i announced extra lectures on saturday evenings and sunday evenings so the extra lectures for those people who had absolutely no background uh, one day i would take an extra lecture in hindi uh, there were five students i think who did not understand hindi so from amongst my tas i found uh, uh, some malayalam speaking people and uh, uh, my friend who was the sysadmin here uh, kartikeyan uh, he helped two students by speaking to them in tamil these are not trivial issues they are hard problems because that student cannot understand anything that you speak in either english or hindi but there, there is no shortcut to it to the better students you have to keep them challenged so you give them harder problems so for example a student who has calculated this histogram very easily and done histogram equalization i will say now you try to do that in real time that means as the image is read how quickly can you do that equalization by telling him that modern cameras do it in hardware and those who are still more interested i'll ask them to think of how hardware circuits would be designed introducing him probably to field programmable gate arrays even before he has understood the more details because many people do not only programming or computers but they also do hardware or electronics in their 11th and 12th so there is no limit up to which you can drive people you what is important is the entire course be kept as much open ended as possible for the top performers without letting the lower end people uh, f f fall fall behind because there is a huge confidence crisis what is true about your colleges and our colleges is that the students coming to engineering are in general amongst the better performers in their schools mm -hmm. because they have got so many marks and particularly if they get into computer science or it or even in mechanical wherever engineering admission means better performing student so if you see most of the students come to us when they have done well in their schools now for the first time they get graded and suddenly people who have never failed in their lives they are failing in applied mechanics they are failing here you would have faced this psychological problem and it is very important to keep their confidence so even the question paper i will share with you my mid sem paper for example there are first two questions where people are wondering why they are there there is one student to ask me that one particular question he says took me 40 minutes to solve that was nine marks and the first two questions which were also nine marks okay uh, uh, did not take more than 15 minutes together he said is that fair i said you it may not appear fair to you but it was fair for them who could barely understand the why leaf looping structures and i said in my course marks will be non linear the better you are the harder you will have to struggle to become slightly better and i told him that is how life is actually he was convinced because that is how life is real so it's not an easy job B sir and uh, the students are like uh, they are asking uh, for the mumbai university they follow the pattern and uh, they are like uh, these kinds of problems whatever are asked in the que uh, question paper usually that one they want first so actually my response to your first question really was that uh, there are 50% students who have not seen the material and there are 50% students who have who think they have seen the material they actually need not have seen the material like okay. my experience so, was like uh, they have, uh, they have understood the program directly the logic was not understood they know the syntax so when we are you, writing the code they know it but yeah. if i want to change the uh, change something they will not be able to solve that yeah so in in fact 
if you give them something like this histogram problem, I think probably uh, 60 to 70 percent of the people who think that they understand it probably will not be able to do. And of the remaining 30 who will actually be able to do will still be intrigued because probably for the first time they are seeing something that they know being put to some really exciting use. Mm -hmm. So, I think this brings back the argument that you have to have exciting uses for whatever you do. Okay. And sir, and like for your second question, that is a very important question by the way, this should uh, affect all of us that independent of how you want to teach programming, students are interested in what is asked in the university system. Uh, this is precisely the reason, again if you recall I have mentioned it in my theme paper, that why IIT courses are not being adapted. Very simple. Mm -hmm. The questions that are asked in the IIT courses are not asked in the university exam. So, if I am a student in some university, I am least interested in this course, however great knowledge there may be. And if as a student I am not interested, as a, my teacher you cannot be interested. Because I will not attend your classes. I will go to a coaching class where he tells me question 3A, how to solve it, 3B, how to solve it, etc. My answer to that, this is a standard, this is a dilemma, this is a countrywide dilemma. What we would like to do, we would like students and teachers to think about programming in the terms that Professor Ranade has described, making it so elegantly enjoyable. We can't reach that state in zero time. We can't simply say shut off present thing and go over there. We can't do that. On the other hand, if we cater only to the question answers of the type which are raised in the current university exams, which are syllabus bound, things are never going to change. In this national mission, what we propose is to give a blend of both to all the teachers and through them to all the students. Because the learning teaching material plus the question banks, everything, everything is going to be made open source, accessible to students, teachers, everyone. The idea here is, when we run the workshop, we will try to run a portion of it giving the glimpse of how the course is taught in IIT. Then we will also say, however, this course is taught and learned in this fashion in various universities, for which you are the people who are going to help us. What is the syllabus? What is the question paper? You remember, we requested you to bring that material. Because that way we will, all of us will know what kind of questions are asked in uh, Karnataka University, what kind of questions are asked in Bhagalpur University, wherever. And these patterns we will cater to. But what we would try to subtly hint is that while students and teachers may concentrate on those portions of the open source material that we create, they will be encouraged to move over to the larger issues. And perhaps not all will do that. But those who wish to will have access to that material. Today imagine the best students in your class, then no different, no worse than students who come to IIT. It's just because limited number of seats, they cannot get into IIT, they go anywhere. What is their fate? Are they not suffering because the particular university or college insists that you give exam like this, you write programs like this, that means you don't learn more than, more than this. Shouldn't we attempt to give something to them as well? Because if, if anything, they are likely to be the change agent for this nation. So the subtle idea is that while we cater to everyone and we will provide question banks with questions and answers of the type which are asked in colleges and universities, but we will additionally provide something else. The important thing is how do we indicate a clever but clear way of stepping for those who are interested to move from here to here. And how do we enthuse our teachers to in turn enthuse their students to follow that clever path to Goa? That is going to be the theme of this workshop. Sir, one more last question I am having. Yes, please. And for this Mumbai University has revised the syllabus since last three years or so. Yes. And then in that one they have given like uh, the introduction for C and then C++ as a language and then the object oriented features of C++ like the um, procedure oriented and object oriented and in the semester hardly we get to take like it's three hours uh, per week uh, as per the schema given and then hardly we are able to take some 30 lectures in a semester and within that stipulated time it's like uh, very difficult to how to go about to uh, cater to all the parts. So let me ask a very naive question 
perhaps my question really is very, very uh, is not correct. But is not there any room for you to convey to Mumbai University that this cannot be done, this should be different, is not isn't there any room? I do not know actually sir. No, but I mean I think <laughs> I, I will strongly request yes. you to explore yeah, that Very pertinent question. You know this is a systemic problem with all of us as Indians, as is a societal problem. We do crib about things which are wrong, but we rarely take the initiative to sit down and write about it and pursue it. Now, that takes extra time, which we rarely have. But if nobody does it, the Bombay University leadership will probably be believing as we speak that, that theirs is the best syllabus in the world. There is the best pattern. Most of us believe here that syllabus represents past. Because syllabus is only based on the human knowledge as it existed when the syllabus was framed. Whereas we are training our students for future. There is not going to be a single problem that students will face in real life which can be guaranteed broken down into portions of syllabus which you have studied. Had that been so, every graduate would have solved any problem. Which means what? That is why what is good about IIT system is while there is a framed syllabus, Every teacher who teaches the course has flexibility to introduce new things. This flexibility does not exist in other colleges. But I will ask you this question. Suppose it, it does not provide you with this flexibility in the standard pattern. Have you tried to create this flexibility by offering that we will have an extra lecture on Saturday just to discuss difficult programming problems? The initiative has to be taken by a teacher. I, I, I tell you my experiences while moving across the country, I came across many such people who took such initiative. There is one particular person I remember, anybody from Orissa here? There is a college in Orissa called Bahrampur place, where I always used to ask this question to teachers that what additional things do you do? And, and one teacher told me sheepishly that he runs a lab on Sunday, he is an electronics teacher. So I asked him what do you do in, on Sundays? So he says nothing at the beginning of a semester. We pick up. The initiative has to be taken by a teacher. I, I, I tell you my experiences by moving across the country. I came across many such people who took such initiative. There's one particular person I remember. Anybody from Orissa here? There's a college in Orissa called Bahrampur Place. There I always used to ask this question to teachers that what additional things you do. And one teacher told me sheepishly that he runs a lab on Sunday, the electronics teacher. So I asked him, what do you do in, on Sunday? So he says, nothing at the beginning of a semester. We pick up a large problem, analyze it, design a complex circuit for it, and build it over the semester. The circuit should do something with the control or what. And I was quite excited. I said, very good. Uh, do all students come? He said, no, sir, only 10, 15 students come. Then I said, those 10, 15 students are worth doing this for, because they are going to be the change agents. You know what he said? So you are the first one who is saying I am doing something useful. My colleagues laugh at me saying syllabus chhod ke bahar ka bada tha. So please, I, why I am saying this is, if there may be a variety of factors responsible for the mess, but all of us together are no less responsible. Because no university, no college will prevent me as a teacher if I go to my director or principal or whatever. And I said, please permit me to conduct extra classes for two hours on every Sunday. And you may not find 60, 80 students interested, but I can guarantee you that you will find 10 students who are interested. And first year when you start this, there will be 10 students. Next year there will be 20 students. It will stabilize some. Looking at you, some other teachers may also start doing it. That is what improvement in learning teaching is. Not syllabus and teaching and university. That's my opinion, of course, but I thought I'd share that with you. Okay, I think we'll stop. Thank you very much, Mr. Anade. I request all of you to join for a couple of years. Let us give him a big hand.